You have both. Who's your agent? Medal match for the 2019 U.S. National Agent. Indoor Championships Final. Shooting off for $8,000 and a gold or silver medal. Our number four qualifier who will advance to target one will be Jesse Broadwater. And our number three qualifier advancing to bail two will be Rio Wild shooting from the right side. Rio has elected to shoot first. Well, Braden Galantine, Greg White, our final match of the day for the USA Archery 2019 National Indoor Championships. Final from the Duke Energy Convention Center in Cincinnati, Ohio. And Braden, I said Clash of the Titans because obviously the amount of wins between Jesse Broadwater and Rio Wild absolutely staggering over the years. If you came into this event with the eight archers that we had, would you expect this final for the gold medal? Anytime you have the eight guys into the you know into a match, into the set of matches like we had earlier today, you can't predict who's going to get there. But no, I'm not surprised at all to see the these two. You know, it's the final two in the, in the gold final. You name the tournament between these guys, <laughs> they've got a championship. Cumulative scoring, 18 meters down range is the target for the Inter X. Levi, or Levi. Rio. Rio with a big bobble there. He didn't look comfortable when he got back and shot one off a little fast. Mm -hmm. Jesse, on the other hand, looked Rock super solid. solid and nothing was moving. Unusual for Rio Wild, he's actually shooting his own GOAT release, which is a dual release as a back tension and a thumb release, and he chose to shoot it as a thumb release. He used to shoot a thumb back in the day, when back in his Carter days, for forever, as long as I knew him. It was set super, super hard, and he pulled and pulled and pulled. It wasn't until recently, maybe the last five, seven years, that he switched over to a back tension. Jesse with a two-finger release. Yes. He said it's been able to allow him to relax his hand a little bit more and, and just get a little bit more into the rotation and pull. Good look at what Rio's shooting now. Switching to the TRX-7, a bow that he just set up, that he's very, very comfortable with. That bow weighing 10 and a half pounds total with all the weights he has stacked on. Oh, that. I believe it. I, I remember I shot his bow a couple of years ago, and it's. It takes a man to get it up. <laughs> it takes a man. Yeah. I tried picking it up today, and I was like, can't do it. 10 for Broadwater. Cumulative scoring, like I mentioned before, so we should have Jesse Broadwater with a, a single point advantage over Rio Wild. Rio, of course, out of Pocatello, Idaho, coming from a very famed wild family of shooters. His father, D, a legend in his own right in this sport. His brother, Logan, also a very competent shooter. 26 years in shooting. This guy, Jesse Broadwater, though, now in Ellington, Florida with his family, originally out of Cumberland, Maryland, 30 years shooting. He's shooting a TRX-8 this time with the Easton 23-15s. I mean, when you look at Broadwater's highlights, I mean, what can you say, right? Two-time Vegas champ, two-time World Field champ, three-time World Cup finals champ. He did those three in a row. Had a chance, I thought he had a chance this year, but he didn't make the finals because he missed one of the events. Right. For Rio, 14 World Championship gold medals. The guy sitting next to me, Braden Gellantine, <laughs> I think you were the first person to really break the total medals, right? Like total medals all for World Archery. Yes, I've got somewhere in the mid-60s. mid <laughs> Too many crickets. Mid 60s. I don't even have that many bills piled up at home. For Rio Wild, right part of your screen. Rio, three, you'll be three shooting Vegas first. titles. Three time world indoor champ. Four Lancaster championships. When I asked them, like, give me some USA uh, archery Rio, indoor career highlights, first. he said he can't remember them Jesse, all. You will be shooting second. Sounds like Rio. The range is clear. So Rio trying to make up for two, you have to say two misses, really. I mean, you know, when you're looking at this level. Right, it's either a 10 or a miss. Yeah. Rio looks just off low, right? Jesse can please control the match here with the 10. Now Jesse kind of, you know, Opens, closes the eye, opens, closes the eye. 
which is a comfort thing trying to, you know, see what he can see and, and make sure he's centered up and it's like, hmm. Well, for real wild right now. This is the first real test, I think. I mean, he, he had some tests in the elimination matches coming here, but really the first real test for gold medal under pressure with that new bow as well. Mm -hmm. So I would imagine after this, Rio's going to have something to say about how he wants to maybe make some setup changes to that bow to make it more pressure friendly, I guess. Yeah, it's, it's a good, it's a good way to you know get into the weekend here and shoot these, shoot these arrows before you shoot the NFA nationals. So yeah, like you said, he'll he'll learn a little bit about the bow and about himself with the bow and mm -hmm. make some adjustments. And expect him to have a pretty solid weekend these next two days. Broadwater, another one, thirty for Broadwater. All right, so 59-56 looks like the lead at the moment. All right, Braden Galantine, if you were in this match, mm -hmm. you'd have to shoot your 23 diameter arrows because of the USA archery, but we still have two days of competition remaining here for the NFA indoor. Would you change your arrows, or would you just say, this is the setup I'm rolling with and continue to shoot your 23s all through the weekend? Absolutely. I would I would have brought two bows with me, one set up for the 23s, one okay. set up for the 27s. Mm -hmm. and the 23 bow would be an advantage going into the shoot off on Sunday afternoon if we were to make it through. All right, because it instead of trying to you know hit the X, you're trying to have an inside out X. Uh -huh. So a smaller diameter arrow is a is an advantage. Okay. That said, a lot of guys switch over to X10s or you know smaller diameter shafts mm -hmm. to get the maximum advantage. I like the forward thinking, you know, just like it's a given you're going to shoot 120 Xs. And it's not it. a given, but you have to plan <laughs> for it. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. All right, so. With 60 points possible being scored so far, it's 59 for Jesse Broadwater, 56 for Rio Wild. If Rio has any chance, he's just got to clean it out. Right, and hope that Jesse gets nervous and, and shoots a few more nines. Which is You'll be shooting highly unlikely. unlikely. <laughs> You'll be shooting second. It's possible. The range is clear. So like Rio, you said, Jesse, uh, Rio definitely needs to clean out. 26 years shooting pro. Real wild. Twenty-six years for Rio, and I asked him, you know, to list his sponsors, and he said Sherry Wild <laughs> is his number one sponsor. That's a smart move. Yeah, she's a saint. <laughs> she lets him travel the world, you know, twenty-five weeks a year, and stays at home with the family. It's, he's got himself a good woman. Broadwater drills himself another ten. Yeah, they just, for real, it just doesn't look like it's breaking as clean in this situation. For Broadwater, calm, cool, collected, under control, taking his time. Yeah, Jesse has a way of making it look effortless. More of a command shooter, he's told me in the past. Jesse likes to just kind of command where it's going to go, takes his time and waits for that shot to, to develop. Mm-hmm. Interesting the way he holds that bow, too, with his grip. Over the top of that lip on the right. Right, his hand's barely in the grip itself. It's mostly above the shelf. Another 30 for Broadwater. Another couple points. Mm -hmm. As we head towards a possible 149 for Jesse Broadwater. Too early to call, obviously. And does it seem different if, if you know you're going into this next end and you have a five-point advantage Braden is it difficult to keep your focus in situations like that sometimes I think it might be difficult to see I, I wouldn't be surprised if Jesse ends up with a 148 147 it is it does become a little bit more difficult to keep your foot down and, and stay as aggressive as you'd like you you do tend to switch over to more protective shot versus an aggressive one Broadwater over his career a very impressive shooter all the way across the board he can deliver and has delivered at 50 meters, he's delivered indoor. He also, I think really where his heart lies is that field kind of shooting, real difficult you know, type of, of shooting, the, the pro archery tour that was going on right. for a few years. <laughs> Extreme angles of shooting. Yeah, he's always been one of the best field shooters we've had in the US and all the guys that shot the international stuff are like, well, why don't you come over here? Are you scared? Like, we shoot really steep angles, just like, come on, I grew up doing that stuff, you know, back home. So. <laughs> Everyone was expecting him to have some steep learning curve when he went over and he didn't skip a beat. 
you know, one of the things I found with archery, Braden, that, right, that you so excel you at too, is technical prowess. Is, is, is you're often on You'll your own to second. figure your bow out. Um, and obviously clear. you and the two guys we're looking at on stage have it. How important do you think it is for you to really understand how your equipment works and be able to make adjustments? Not to be as expert as you are and these two are, but you know, really to know and understand your equipment. I really think to be one of the greats, you, you have to have a really good understanding of the cause and effect to everything that you do and, and what you know, kind of benefits you'll see from it. So these guys spend countless hours tweaking, getting the exact feel that they need from the bow so that they can perform at their best. Broadwater with the little gum in there. Nice chew. So the last shot by Rio, he had drilled it. And it looks like he's going to clip a 10 on that. Mm -hmm. Good inside out, though, is wild. Getting on track a little late in this match. All right, so we know for real it's another 10. The middle arrow is called a 9, but we're going to have the judge take a look at it and see if that's turned over because it's a 10-9 liner. Ooh. One ten nine liner. It's hard for us to see. Definitely tough to tell. <laughs> and there's always the uh, the trusty binoculars. Yeah, yeah. When he wants to take a look on his own, just to see that. That's one of the things I found in archery. Obviously, your equipment's really important, but your binoculars <laughs> are really critical. Mm -hmm. All right, so they call that one a ten. So. 30-30 for both archers. The lead remains at five. Perfect 30s for both archers. We head into our final end of competition for the gold medal at this U.S. National Indoor Championships. Here's a little replay of Jesse Broadwater still at the top of his game. Ria, you'll be shooting first, sir. Jesse, you'll be shooting second, sir. The range is clear. Grab those mavens and had a look. All right, so Rio shoots first. Down five points. I think it's pretty elemental at this point with a good shot from Rio. Now it's about really getting some good shots in for the rest of the weekend. Yeah, it's just minimizing mistakes, making sure that nothing happens like we saw with the first women's recurve match. Just no technical errors. Just take the match and on to the next one. Solid touch in the middle. Doing it in fine style. Nothing Rio can shoot here. Barring a disaster from Broadwater, missing the target altogether is going to do it. But he still nails it, drills it, gets on. Good form with a couple of 30s to exit this match. Any scoring ring right now is going to do it for Jesse Broadwater. Why not another 10? Why not? Another 30 for Jesse Broadwater. And just dropping one single point, and the look on his face is, ah, oh, man, I can't believe I didn't shoot a 150. <laughs> Definitely a look of relief. Glad it's over. Confirmations of scores coming in. But hearty congratulations to Jesse Broadwater, who will add 2019 U.S. And National Indoor, Indoor Championship gold, gold medalist champion. to his Jesse resume and kick off his Your archery weekend in fine Rio style on this Friday. Wild. Curious to see how Jesse reacts after this. Matches, he's going to head off to PJ to go have a conversation with him. So congratulations to Jesse Broadwater. A solid 149 does it for him, and he's with PJ. 
All right, Jesse, 2019 Indoor National Champion. How's it feel? Feels good. Yeah, feels good. Um, I like how they're doing this format now. It makes the uh, you know the nationals mean a lot more, and uh, it's getting more people involved in it. So, yeah, I, re I really like this format. So. One X you dropped in that last match. That's got to be. Uh, you looked comfortable up there. How'd you feel? Yeah, I've been feeling good. Been shooting good at home, and uh, everything's been right on track. So I shot good matches today. Only dropped one uh, arrow today in my matches. So I'm feeling pretty good. What's next for you on the schedule? Well, we got the the NFA Nationals here, and then uh, next week is uh, another ASA uh, shoot. So, this you know, this will be the last indoor shoot I think for a while though. So switching gears to outside, and uh, looking forward to that. All right, congratulations, Jesse. All right, thank you. All over the place, all over the place for Jesse Broadwater, ASA indoor, outdoor, doing a bunch of stuff. He loves it, and I'm sure that we'll see him too doing more I don't know is this is this an on year or an off year for the USA archery field it's an it's an on year isn't it I honestly have no idea that's yeah. the only avenue of archery that I don't partake in so I believe it's a qualification year an odd year yeah I can't remember I remember uh, being able to shoot with him and but just a, a back in 2015 a talented archer all the way across the board one of the most complete archers that we have seen totally so He's we've seen some great matches here today at this 2019 USA, U.S. National Indoor Championships Finals, the second year, and we expect it to go longer. What do you think about the format and how they're doing it now versus how they used to do it? Yeah, so in, in years past, it was just the straight score shoot like we have, you know, the qualification, and that was the end of the tournament. This is way better because you, you never really, really got to see your competitors before when it was spread out over 13 locations across the country. So now getting everyone here and shooting the finals, it's definitely more of a, a true competition. So looking ahead to next year for what we've done for indoor, if they have these 13 different venues, mm -hmm. would you rather shoot early and get your score in and then just watch other people trying to you know, get your high score? Right. Or would you rather shoot one of those late rounds like you did and be able to know what score you need to hit I, to qualify? I really, for, for me, I think I'd rather shoot an earlier event. That way I can kind of set the pace. It's a lot easier for me to you know, go in and try to be the lead horse from the beginning versus trying to you know, leapfrog everybody. It's just trying to keep the, the nervous energy down as much as you can. Congratulations to all of our medalists here at the 2019 U.S. National Indoor Championships final from the Duke Energy Convention Center. For Braden Galantine, I'm Greg White. Thanks for joining our CAM coverage here on YouTube, and we look forward to seeing you at our next event. Take care and shoot straight.